to my dear Emmy, October 2nd, 06. I made my connection from Kingstown to Rush from where I drove to Farfi's boat. Driving through Rush, the postmistress jumped out of her cottage and said, Sir, there's a letter for you. I thought you'd like to have it. I should think so too, as it was from my own Emmy forwarded from B Square. It was a joy to get it. Then across to Lambie Island to meet my new clients, the Bearings, we were nearly becalmed. It took two and a half hours to do the three miles, and I had to row. I got there about 9.30. The Bearings very cordial. Mrs. Bearing is a curious creature, a dear thing unlike anyone else I know. She is very strong and active, devoted to her babies and husband and quite happy on the island. It truly is a magical place and I look forward to starting my works on the castle. With love, Edwin. The island is steeped in history. It's been occupied by people for a good six or 7,000 years. And one of the most remarkable discoveries in the last 20 years or so has been a stone axe factory. Cecil and Maud had recently married when they were living on the continent in Paris and they saw an advertisement in The Field magazine which simply stated Island for Sale off the east coast of Ireland. Cecil's ears pricked up immediately because he, whilst a banker by profession, he was besotted by natural history. That is where his real passions lay. He got a boat to take him out to the island in January of 1905 and he immediately recognised the potential of the island as a nature reserve, a place where nature was still flourishing without the impact of man. And on the spur of the moment he, he bought the island and within a few months it was his. And to him this was a Galapagos island, an enchanted island, a place which he could make his own little kingdom. I'm Matthew Jebb, and my great-grandparents were Cecil and Maud Baring. Well, when Cecil and Maud moved onto the island, they chanced upon the newly founded Country Life magazine, an article about a castle that had been restored on Lindisfarne Island off the uh, northeast coast of England. And this had been done by a young architect, Edwin Lutchens. And they invited him out to the island. The three of them came up with the design and the whole sort of ethics of what they were gonna do on Lamb Bay. And one of the great beauties of the project is that it certainly cost a fabulous amount of money. Edwin Lutchens always said, you know, without great patrons, you cannot practice great architecture. Every biography about Lutchens mentions the fact that he was at his happiest when he was staying with the Bearings. To my dear Emmy, June the 10th, 09. The Bearings very kind, very amusing is the life. The children affectionate and nice to me. The castle is pulled to pieces and they live in three cottages up the hill and I slept in a room near the harbour so I had a long walk for my meals. How you would love Lambie. The island is full of wildlife. The Japanese cranes now fly around which is an amusing and weird sight. The cock rear is very busy sitting so I only saw the hen. They have imported a Dutch bull which is free as yet and out and about with the cows. I do envy their life and oh what fun it would be with you and you would love the air and freedom of it all, all four square, seaside, mountain to yourself and family. With love, Edwin. Essentially all his, uh, well half of his professional career he was working with Cecil and Maud. So the initially um, in 1908 to 1910, the major construction work was done on the, the castle, the, the original old keep, the new extension, the guest wing. And then over the succeeding years, they added the big rampart wall, 
they um, added buildings down at the harbour, the real tennis court, the Bothy building. Uh, the White House was built in the 1920s. And each time a new building was added, you know, this was the culmination of years of thought and consideration. So every single building today on the island is either a new build by Lutchens or it has been Lutchenized in a beautiful and seamless manner. To my dear Emmy, August 27th, 13. Friday night, I had a perfect crossing. Went to Hoth Harbour where we found the Shamrock and then we sailed to Lumby, two minutes under the hour. Delicious. We are going to build cowsheds, bothy, lengthen another four foot six inches the great Chinese wall, a sort of customs house, possibly cottages. I was very busy all the time. They are in love with the place again. They drink buttermilk. The rears thrive, but no mate for the chamois yet. With love, Edwin. But well, one of the interesting things about uh, Edwin Lutchens is very early on, in his early 20s, he met a woman by the name of Gertrude Jekyll. Now, Gertrude Jekyll had been a, a watercolorist, quite a celebrated artist in her way, until um, she had problems with her vision. Her, her sight began to deteriorate badly. She found she could no longer paint, so she took up gardening. And Gertrude Jekyll was besotted by Edwin Lutyens and Lamb Bay is one such example where Lutyens and Jekyll would have sat down together, discussed the building, so he would have spent many days with her talking her through the building, show her the plans of it. She was in her 70s at this point so she wasn't able for, for travel, you know, least of all all the way over to Ireland and then out to a little offshore island. So he would have talked her through the landscape, how the building was going to look, and she would have drawn up the plans. But she would have also been very influential in the design of the garden. As you walk up from the harbour, you come to this remarkable set of terraced steps with lawns on top of them. Um, they rise and they fall, and as you, as you walk up, you've got this extraordinary repetitive sensation of entering a hidden realm. And before you even enter these terraces, you're met with these curving walls. And, and Lutchens would always say that the open arms of somebody you're approaching is a sign of welcome. Bringing you up through these terraces, there is a certain sort of secrecy. As the island sits there in the middle of the Irish Sea, the experience of landing and visiting the castle on the island is like unwrapping something slowly. There's an enormous anticipation and nothing is a disappointment really as you approach the, the, the final destination. One of the remarkable features of Lambay Castle is that the approach is across a grassy meadow. There is no roadway leading to a, a door into the castle and you enter through this remarkable encircling wall filled with a mature woodland and in the summer months this is a, a haven of, of bird life and stillness even on a windy day. It is in many ways an island within an island. The original castle building probably dates back to the 14th century so the building has been prey to constant um, redesigns and embellishments over the years and Edwin Lutyens showed enormous respect to it. He didn't want to interrupt the original medieval structure. He wanted to demonstrate to the viewer exactly what they were looking at in terms of an original building. Lutyens has masterfully added this huge extension, this guest wing that he added to the castle. It's a two-storey guest wing, but it is buried into the hillside. It has long sloping roofs that make it almost invisible and subservient to the original medieval keep that he's attached it to. He's also used pan tiles throughout. This enables the building literally to blend in and it's a, a difference of about 500 years from the building on the right here to the building on the left.
all around the building are these beautiful lead rain hoppers. These are very ornamental in that some of them are so positioned that they're never going to trap any water off the building or roofs. And then written across it, um, the, a combination of the year that the building was finished, MCMX 1910, and then in the central portion, he's got CMB, Cecil and Maud Baring, a little monogram to, to cover their names. So this was, you know, a, a beautiful construction with layers of meaning in it. The castle is surrounded by an intricate series of walled courtyards and terraces. Gertrude Jekyll had a fantastic colour theory of planting, whereby the eye needed to be refreshed with a different sort of palette of colours. And these remarkable gardens give the illusion of a huge space because you are constantly entering a new area. Essentially outdoor rooms, each one has got its own feel. The lawn is a carpet. There is the wallpaper of wall plants and the borders are like furniture around the corners of the room and it's a beautiful sensation. That combination of Edwin Lutyens and Gertrude Jekyll was the pinnacle, if you like, of Edwardian uh, country living, the perfect aesthetic of building and garden. The current chapel was probably built in the 1840s, but this 1840s church was very striking. When the Bearings bought the island, it was a whitewashed building with big Gothic sash windows. And then they have added this Greek portico, this Doric, it looks like a little Greek temple. Um, and it's a very striking sight, but this is all being cut from uh, island stone, from porphyry again. And it is a, a beautiful, a uh, classical building, but done in um, a, a sort of a rustic manner that enables it to blend in perfectly with the landscape. The astonishing thing about Lutyens is he was a real magpie for designs and uh, vernacular styles. So in the mausoleum building on the island, where Maud and Cecil and their son Rupert are, are all buried, he has got two large urns. And those urns are precisely replicated in India Arch in the middle of New Delhi. And what is intriguing is in the uh, 1920s, when he was designing that mausoleum for after Maud had died, he was also building New Delhi at the same moment. And this is a feature of Mughal architecture, this extraordinary urn. And he has simply said, I will try those out on Lambay, as well as putting them in the middle of New Delhi. And on top of all that, the entire landscape of the island has been very carefully considered. So the placement of new buildings alongside medieval buildings, uh, 17th century, 16th century, 19th century buildings. Lutyens has put all of these buildings into a single landscape and it is as a result almost flawless. You could say you know a huge amount of care has gone into where each of these buildings has been positioned so that it doesn't interrupt the beauty of the previous structures. So he was very very careful about conservation and he dealt with it in a manner that um, in a way throughout the 20th and 21st century architects have struggled and found it very difficult to actually blend the old and the new and he did it seamlessly. To my dear Emmy, it is an awful anxiety getting away from Lambe, but when there I forget all the world and I wonder if India will matter. With love, Edwin.